Hello and welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The union government has widened the ambit of PMLA, its anti money laundering law, to include transactions carried out by chartered accountants, company secretaries on behalf of their clients. The finance ministry notification, which came earlier this week, implies that chartered accountants, company secretaries, even cost and work accountants are now reporting entities if they are managing their clients' money. This makes it mandatory for them to maintain a record of all transactions and furnish them to financial intelligence units. We will find out how the chartered accountant community is reacting to these developments. But first, let's go across to my colleague Shivani Bazaz to understand more about this notification and how it will impact cost and work accountants, company secretaries and chartered accountants. Shivani, over to you. The central government has notified that the financial transactions carried out by chartered accountants, company secretaries and cost and work accountants on behalf of their clients will now come under the ambit of Prevention of Money Laundering Act, also known as PMLA. The Union Finance Ministry min, uh, via a Gazette notification clarified that any activities done by these relevant persons will be recognized under the PMLA if these professionals carry out financial transactions on behalf of their clients, such as buying and selling of any immovable property, managing of client money, securities and assets, management of bank savings and security accounts, organization of contribution for the creation, operation or management of companies, limited liability partnerships or trust and the buying and selling of the business entities. The current notification has been issued under the Section 2 of PMLA 2002. The section already includes gaming activities, registration authorities, real estate agents, dealers in precious metals and stones. Now CACS and CMAs have also been included in the above list for certain transactions. This means that they have uh, now become reporting entity for the purpose of these transactions. According to experts, as a reporting entity, CAs, CS and cost and work accountants will have to do KYC of all the clients entering into the above transactions and to maintain record thereof. The Indian Chartered Accountant Institute has said uh, that they have already prescribed a KYC requirement and standard of quality control which lay down quality standards for engagements by CAs. ICAI has also said that they will conduct awareness programs for its members in relation to such financial, financial transactions and will continue to work with the authorities and other regulators so that these changes are implemented in the right perspective and role of professionals is understood. All right, uh, we're joined by Harshal Bhuta, partner and CEO at PR Bhuta and Company. We'll also be joined by Shailesh Haribhakti. But uh, let me go across to Harshal Bhuta at this point. Uh, give us a sense of how exhaustive is this notification when it comes to the most essential work carried out by chartered accountants, company secretaries and cost and work accountants. Yes. Hi, Parikshit. So basically, this uh, notification has come in wherein uh, you know you are doing any financial transaction on behalf of your client and that is also during the course of your profession so ideally these transactions uh, uh, should cover the transactions where you are acting as an authorized signatory uh, for a particular uh, you know type of transaction but in the case when you are only an advisor then under section 3 if you are knowingly doing something then you are anyway covered so therefore, this is kind of an expansion to that list and only restricted to certain transactions. So therefore, whenever a uh, practicing CA or CS or CWA would be enabling or undertaking certain transactions on behalf of their clients, they will have to maintain exhaustive uh, KYC requirements and other due diligence uh, uh, requirements to be kept in mind. All right. So exhaustive <laughs> KYC requirements. Uh, does this work? Does this make the work of chartered accountants, company secretaries, cost and work accountants uh, more complicated, riskier as well? Uh, yes, I would not say riskier because, you know, anyway under the ethics, when you onboard a client, even the CA regulations uh, have some kind of KYC. You need to take, uh, you know, the list of directors, you need to know which is the parent company and so on and so forth. But dear, more onerous is something that you also have to identify the beneficial owner. Now, how does one do that? We are not financial institutions who can use refinitive database and do a world data check for, you know, PEP persons or, you know, persons from uh, obscure backgrounds. We are simple practitioners who want to do our duty in the right manner. Uh, so this is, yes, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, onerous documentation requirements as far as that is concerned. Yes, I totally agree with you. Right, you're saying honours <laughs> documentation uh, would be required going uh, going forward. But uh, 
Also, what would be your advice to uh, the community, to chartered accountants, cost and work accountants, uh, who would be working on behalf of their clients when they're advising them, they're authorized signatories in uh, the formation of companies. Uh, what would be some of the due diligence procedures they will have to carry out now? Yes. So a frank advice that at least, you know, we follow is that whenever a new client comes on board, you please thoroughly do the KYC. If you are not comfortable about the antecedents of the client, then please don't onboard them because now you have an additional responsibility. And basically this has come in because if at any point in time, uh, there comes a situation where the client has done some fishy business, which is not in your knowledge. Even in that case, you can be uh, held liable and uh, the authorities would want to reconstruct the entire transaction with your help. Okay. So therefore, stay away from the clients that you feel uncomfortable with. You do your due diligence and take due care while onboarding a client. Right. Now, as far as this notification goes, it covers buying and selling of any immovable property, management of client money, security or assets, uh, management of bank savings or securities account, organization of uh, contribution for creation, operation or management of companies, creation, operation, management of companies, limited liability partnerships and selling and buying of uh, assets as well. Uh, this seems to be a rather long list. Will the chartered accountants, company secretaries also need to act as whistleblowers if they see some sort of um, fiscal mismanagement, some sort of uh, fraud going on? Yes. So at least these whistleblower provisions are there in some of the audit provisions. When you do an audit for large companies, you have a responsibility to act as a whistleblower. But in other cases, as per the rules, uh, uh, the provisions of the PMLA, you have to, uh, you know, conduct enhanced due diligence. If you come to know of a fact wherein, you know, uh, some fishy business could be carried out by the client. But uh, as far as I know, there are no provisions where you need to act as a whistleblower, at least under PMLS. Hmm. Right. Right. Uh... Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, Harshal Bhutta, giving us your view on the new notification that has been brought out by the Department of Revenue, Ministry of Finance. Uh, of course, uh, there are different uh, chartered accountant firms who are looking at this notification. Uh, would you also be seeking some sort of clarification post that? I really wish that the ICI can take this up because there are certain terms which are used in financial transactions. Okay, so does it even extend to, you know, enabling uh, tax payments for your clients if they are foreign, uh, you know, clients? So, so many nuances are coming out of this notification. I really hope that uh, ICI and the other uh, professional bodies can also take up a detailed representation and get clarifications for the benefit of uh, its members. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Harshal Bhutta. We are going to uh, take a short break here on News Centre. But when we return, we will focus on Manipur, which remains tense following ethnic clashes earlier this week. The Indian Army says that the situation remains under control as the centre deploys more troops. That and much more when we're back.